Hi everybody, this is Nick with Audio Video Export. It's a pleasure to be able to serve you all as we go through this uh, unprecedented times. But what the great news is about uh, us as a, as a people is, you know, we're gonna be as resourceful as possible and it's exciting to be able to share some really great information with you uh, today with regard to Luxel and Just Ed Power and how the two of them are really so complimentary. One of the things that um, if you've worked with Audio Video Export for any period of time, you will, he'll, you will have noticed or you will know um, that many of the brands that we work with are very, very complementary and oftentimes fit hand in glove. Luxel and Just Ed Power are no exceptions to those. There's gonna be a lot of information. We'll probably go a little bit over an hour. If you have somewhere to go towards the end, no worries. Uh, we will be sending out a, a video recording of this webinar and what's going on. Bear in mind also that there's a handouts window where you can download the two presentations that are being shown today. Um, on behalf of uh, Juan Pablo of Polaris Controls. A little bit about them, Polaris is, in, is the rep company in charge of managing the, uh, you know, the sales into Latin America and the Caribbean for both Luxel and Just Ed Power. We've got the, 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 the privilege and pleasure of having Juan Pablo with us today. He's based out of Guatemala, uh, but it's fluent obviously in English and Spanish. And so uh, he's got a lot of really good information. We're really pleased to be able to have you here. Thanks so much. JP. One last note before we get started, there is a question box. So if you do have a question, please feel free. We're going to try to, um, any of the relevant questions will try to stick in the middle of the presentation and I'll interrupt, or uh, we will have some time for Q&A. But uh, go ahead and fill out those questions as they come along, um, and I'll be responding to those as they as they come to, as appropriate. Without any further ado, thank you so much, JP, and uh, it's all yours. Uh, thank you very much, Nick. Uh, we really appreciate it here in Polaris Control. So you open up um, uh, the opportunity to talk to all of uh, the Caribbean-based dealers. Hi, everybody. My name is Juan Pablo Garcia. I'm the technical manager uh, for Polaris Controls, responsible uh, for all Latin America. Um, as Nick said, we're going to talk today about two brands that go hand in hand um, that are Luxo for networking and Just a Power. Uh, but just for startup, this is the our, our team. Um, besides all the support and team that you have on audio video export, we are the reps, as Nick mentioned. Um, but any, feel free to communicate with uh, everyone here, shown here, uh, if you have any further questions after the webinar. So the agenda, and I'm going to try to hit it around an hour, an hour twenty. Um, so first one, we're going to uh, look into the products and solutions that Luxo has to offer. So we're going to do a quick overview of some uh, networking concepts. I know pretty much uh, maybe all of you are familiar with it, but just, just to so that we can all be on the same page. So then we're going to talk about a little bit about routers, switches, access points, and some advantages that Luxo has to offer uh, to you as a custom installation um, company. And after that, um, Just a Power. Just a Power, um, it's a company that uh, has been working for more than 25 years doing um, mainly video distribution over IP. Uh, they started um, um, the company uh, coming people from, from Intel, so they're pretty familiar with what they're doing. So we're going to do a quick overview of, of what makes Just a Power unique. Uh, some uh, products and characteristics that are really amazing. And uh, if you haven't uh, used it, um, we should encourage you after this webinar to try it uh, because it's a great, great product. So um, what's Luxo? Luxo, uh, it's, first of all, it's a brand of Le Grand, uh, but what's particularly about Luxo into the, in, in the Le Grand, Le Grand umbrella is that um, Luxo is a, a company that do works by its own. Um, it is uh, under the Legrand umbrella, but it's working mainly economically, business-wise, technically. They have their own people, so th that's something to, to talk about. Um, so first, some networking concepts. Um, so what's the router? The router, um, its main purpose is to divide two networks, right? So in, in a residential environment or, or office or commercial environment, uh, we always recommend to have a router besides the one that your ISP or internet provider gives you one. Um, there's a many reasons, and we're going to see a bunch of reasons why we recommend this. And uh, I think from, from top, 
uh, pretty much you need to own the network. Um, you just need to rely on your ISP's router that's probably not as good as other manufacturers uh, as we are, um, but it is better to own the network from the very first beginning that's from the router perspective. Also, the router that your internet provider gives you uh, typically handles a lot of um, information. So it works uh, mainly as a modem. If you have like a coaxial or either fiber um, connection coming in, so it works as a modem. Uh, typically, it handles all the cable TV and the telephone uh, signals in the same um, in the same equipment. So it is not probably the best router. So you can rely all your home automation, lighting, um, access points, and and everything you have hooked up or connected to the network. So that, that's uh, the best way to go. Um, the switch, the switch is basically an equipment that will provide us a physical connection to the network. So it transfers data between all the devices, uh, but they are hardwired to, to this equipment. Access point, as, as we all know, is the device that helps us connect to the local network via wireless. Some of the things we recommend, and we often see that dealers through the Caribbean and Latin America don't often do, it's um, try to connect everything that can be hardwired to a switch. Don't rely on just doing everything on the network wirelessly, because that, that's not the intention of an access point. So please remember just to use an access point and connect wireless um, equipments that don't have the availability to be uh, connected via hardware. So that's a that's a, a great uh, key point and suggestion that we always uh, try to recommend. And last, um, we have an equipment that's not typically um, part of a network, but more and more we've seen it and, and we recommend it as well as part of any network that's a, a network control PDU, a power distribution unit. What this equipment will give you is individual outlet control for remote power cycling any device you have connected to it. So typically, the first device that you want to connect to a PDU, so you can either remote or automatically do a power cycle, it's your ISP modem. Um, I'm pretty much sure more, um, most of you guys have to either at home or at um, clients or at the office need to reboot this modem at least let's say once every month. So this is something that can be seen um, as an advantage uh, by doing it automatically. So that, that's something that we always will recommend and every time you feel to communicate with us for a network design, either for from audio video export or from us directly, we will always recommend you a PDU into, into the network. Um, so let's start uh, looking into our router solutions. So we have two sets of families of routers. We have the wireless routers and the wired routers. We have two wireless routers available, XWR, 1200 and the 3150. Um, pretty much the difference between these two, um, it uh, comes from the um, characteristics of the access point that's built in. So these routers, they're not only the availability to separate the networks, uh, but they do have an access point um, uh, inside. So it's an all-in-one solution. This wired router also comes with a built-in wireless controller. And we're going to see what a wireless controller can do and into a project and how can you use it to leverage your wireless uh, communication. Then we have two sets of wired routers, the ABR4500 and the 5000, uh, pretty much the same characteristics. And uh, one of the main differences, uh, pretty much the you can say probably the only difference is that the ABR5000 it is, has two one connections, let's say two internet connections, and it can communicate 
from one to uh, the internet connection um, on a gigabit connection. And the ADR4500, it has a multiple one uh, configuration. So you can either have one, two, three, or four internet connection supply. So what's the benefit or, or, or purpose of having two internet connections into the same network? So first of all, um, you can configure it to use it as try to multiply the, the um, your, your network um, capacity of internet connection. Uh, so if you have, let's say, two 20 megabits or 40 megabits connection, it will actually not add up the bandwidth, so you, you will not end up, let's say, 220s, you will not end up with 140 megabyte uh, bandwidth connection, but you will have a better connection because it would make um, um, some of the, the devices connected to the network go through the internet to one um, ISP, and some of the network will be going to the second ISP connection. So it will, you will have a better uh, performance overall uh, to your internet connection in that network. The other um, way that you can configure these two or more ISP providers hook up to your network is to work as a failover. So let's say you have one main internet connection going to the home at 50 megabits, but you have a spare one that's running on 10 megabits um, on the second connection. So if the first one fails, you'll still have an internet connection that's a slower, but you're still gonna have some internet connection. So that's a benefit of our wire routers. The wireless routers, they don't have this availability to have two or more ISP connections for one. And then we have two models of wireless controllers. We're going to see uh, a couple of minutes from now what a wireless controller can do. Uh, we have two models, the 1000 and 2000. Uh, the main difference is that the first one handles um, up to 16 access points, and the second one uh, handles up to 32 access points. And we're going to see um, what, what the wireless controller can do uh, in a couple of minutes. So the first question is, uh, if you're wondering, which router should I, should I use? So we have two families, right? So, so we have the wireless one on the, on the wired one. So it depends on a couple of questions or parameters that you have to figure out in your project. Um, the first of all, some software features included. So all of our routers have two software features included externally, not, not from, from Luxel, but um, from third-party softwares that are installed or pre-installed already in a router. One of them is Domots. Domots, um, it's a remote desktop uh, connection, so you can um, um, remotely uh, manage all your network, so you can do firmware upgrades, you can see uh, internet speed, uh, and you can manage pretty much uh, all of the things in your network via remotely. You need to have um, a public IP. It's all being done by the cloud. Uh, the second software that we have pre-installed um, in our routers is uh, Router Limits. Router Limits is an internet managed uh, software. So you can have firewalls configure um, scheduling. So you can do something that after, let's say, 10 p.m., um, I don't have any internet connection, so my daughter and children are not um, sleeping over, just being connected to the internet. So there's a lot of things that you can manage uh, in, through that router limit software. Um, if you go for a wired router, router is typically being used in a smaller applications. So let's say uh, smaller offices, uh, apartments, um, and those kind of projects. So first of all, you need to place this wireless router central to the desired coverage area. So the placement is the key on the wireless router. And why is that? Because it has uh, an embedded and, and built-in access point. So if you just stock it in a basement or in a closet, you will be losing the availability to use that 
um, access point built in in this wireless router. Uh, obviously, it needs local power. So this is not a POE thing, as uh, so most of our access points are. So it is great if just a single router uh, is needed. Uh, but if more access points are needed to have uh, an even balanced coverage on the project, you can add up to two access points to the built-in controller that, that these two wired router models we have has. Um, if you need more access points, you can always deploy more than two, but they will not be uh, under the management of the controller. And we're going to see later on uh, what does this controller do. The wired, wired routers are obviously more flexible. Uh, they're more powerful. Um, typically, they place out of sight, either in a rack or a, a closet, an equipment closet. Um, you need some access point to create some wireless coverage. Uh, and if you need um, uh, some wireless coverage, we always will recommend you using a wireless controller so you can have the active ROM assistance that we have. Um, there's a little mistake here under the 16 access points. So we have two models now. One, remember one, it's 16, and the second one handles up to 32 access points. So some features we, we have um, and Luxel that makes us different from a lot of manufacturers uh, are features that you will find pretty much um, commercial routers. And that's uh, also um, true for most of our product line, switches, access points. We always build uh, commercial grade um, products, networking gear, so you can feel pretty much secure handling and deploying this on residential environments. Obviously, we don't recommend this for high end, let's say like banking and other applications, but definitely you can use it because it has a really, really robust routing performance. All of our routers, from the smaller wireless one to the, our, our ABR5000 or largest one, handles uh, VLAN configuration. VLANs are virtual networks that exist in your physical network that will separate. Um, and if you want, the, you can hide both of the networks from each other so they cannot um, see one another. This is great for either residential or commercial guest networks. So you don't have uh, guests coming into your house or offices that are looking into your cameras or other equipments that you have um, connected to, to, the, to the network. Other features are like quality of services, the controller that we already mentioned that's built in the wireless routers, the two third-party softwares that are uh, um, built in our routers, there are the bots, remember it's uh, the remote management system that uh, has a monthly fee, uh, but it's worthwhile uh, paying for that. And the router limits, that's completely free, free. that's an internet management, and it will all, only work um, uh, in the equipment that you have connected to your local network. If you have, let's say, your son's iPad, uh, but he's using and going to a sleepover to a friend's house, um, that image management, management that you have set up for your son will not work uh, outside your local network. If you want it to work outside your local network, then you can actually uh, subscribe and have a monthly fee that will give you um, internet management uh, through every, whatever connection you have, either if you have a 3G or, or cellular connection, it will work the same management that you have configured to that uh, specific device. Uh, the dual one capabilities that are built in the, the wired routers, and as I mentioned before, the availability to go gigabit connection from one to land on our ABR bypass. So switches. So we have a lot of uh, switches that you can go from manage, not manage, with PoE, without PoE, uh, specifically for video, specifically for surveillance systems or hooking up cameras. Um, but one of the features that I really like about Luxel into our business, into our commercial 
and, and residential installations um, is the availability to have uh, the connections and all the ports on the back. That's great when you're doing an AB solution into homes or offices. So you can look at your record, your installation, and it's very clean. Uh, typically, in more commercial like uh, offices, you'll see the the, the normal, let's say, uh, switches that have the the connections through the the front. But that's typically when you have a um, rack deployed on a closet uh, or a basement or something that uh, people are not looking. But these um, switches that have the connection on the back uh, are pretty much a great difference from what we offer um, from all the of other manufacturers that handle networking gear for our custom installation business. So first we have that uh, AB series family. The AB series family uh, are the ones that have all the connections on the back. We have the security and IP video uh, that's mainly focused on surveillance systems. And what makes us unique in this application, it's the power budget that we offer uh, uh, through all of our, our POE ports. So uh, from other manufacturers that claim to have um, POE switches, typically they don't have the availability to, to give power to the entire um, switch to each port. So if you have, let's say, 12 POE switch um, in, in your deploy, pretty much you can be sure that you cannot hook up the, to, the, the total of 12 ports to a CCTV camera because the, the overall power budget from that switch will not be the sum of all the 12 ports using the POE. So that's something that makes us really unique in, 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 this, um, in this switch family. Another characteristic that we see, so just bear with me one second, Nick. Yeah, sure. And uh, I know that you're going to be bringing it up uh, later on, but obviously there are, are a couple of important points as you, as you, you know, take care of that. Um, Luxel and Just Said Power, both of them exclusively sold through audio video export. There is no other method to be able to get them into Latin America and the Caribbean outside of us with a warranty. Um, and that is because the, both of these brands care very much about protecting the channel and making sure that there are no unauthorized online sales including a three-year warranty with Luxel and a five-year warranty with Just Said Power. So, sorry for that, but um, as you all know, pretty much uh, we are all in quarantine and I was just receiving some groceries that were being delivered. So sorry for that. Um, so another feature, another characteristic that really uh, stands up uh, from all of our other uh, manufacturers is that all, all of our Luxel switches are full speed. And I'm going to explain what a full speed switch uh, is. So all of the switches have some kind of processor because it has, some of them have to do VLAN, some of them handles POE, even the unmanaged switch have some uh, processor built in for some kind of, of information. So this processor has obviously a speed um, that it works. So, an example uh, and the definition of a full speed switch, it's going to be the switch that its backplane speed or its processor works as, as double the number of ports. So in, the, in that example that you're looking right now, a 24 port switch should work at 48 gigabits per second. So what does this mean on, on, on a network environment? So in a, in a network connection from a TCP uh, IP, th this is a two-way communication. So this means that you will have the full bandwidth, one gigabit to upload and one gigabit for download on that specific port and all of our switches. This is a characteristic that if you go deep into some data sheets, 
uh, from other manufacturers, this is not something that they offer. And this is typically, for example, in your, in your ISP, mainly the residential ISP providers, you'll see some characteristics as they will offer, let's say, 100 megabits download, but they, but they will only offer, let's say, 20 megabits um, upload. Okay, so this is pretty much that same comparison, but um, this doesn't mean that if you have a local switch, you'll have the same upload and download bandwidth on your, your ISP, because that depends on, on your ISP. But let's say you have um, some uh, CCTV um, surveillance system and you have an NVR. Uh, what this will help you is that you always and you have the guarantee that all your upload communication from your cameras to the NVR will have that one gigabit upload speed as well. So this is uh, one of the features that really differentiates from our, from our switches into other manufacturers. Another uh, set of features that uh, we have, or most of our switches are managed switches, both in layer two and layer three. Uh, we also have some unmanaged that need no configuration. Uh, our managed switches, its configuration is very easy. Uh, uh, you don't need to be a statistical certified guy or uh, a software engineer to configure a VLAN, for example. Uh, it's pretty much easy. Um, in our Polaris Controls YouTube channel, you'll see some uh, videos and webinars uh, explaining how to do a VLAN. Sorry if they're in Spanish, but if you need some help on that, uh, just uh, call somebody at Audio Video Export here, here at Polaris and we'll help you with that. Um, a feature that's really unique into what we offer is that we have already pre-configured what's called the spanning tree product. So what's the spanning tree product? So a lot of DUI um, um, gear that you can find right now uh, in the market, like the do-it-yourself kind of equipments, um, have some problems or can um, deliver some problems depending on how you connect it and configure it. So let's say, for example, Somos. In some Somos configurations, you'll end up with a network loop uh, just continually broadcasting the same message over and over again and will affect the performance, the speed on your network. Um, so one of the, the things that it's great about this spanning tree protocol already being configured is that this protocol will stop and control this broadcast storms and loops in the network. So even if you or your end client uh, pause or, or, or creates a problem with your network, this pan tree protocol will actually stop at some point this loop and you'll have your networking uh, performing as you were used to before. Um, some of our models are stackable. These are uh, for more larger deployments than pretty much for, for commercial deployments, not residential, just a big residential. So let's start now with a, our wireless access point family. So we have a both indoor and outdoor capabilities. So that's great for uh, the Caribbean that used to need a lot of outdoor um, coverage. So the, the ones on the top are our indoor um, models. Please don't use this on terraces um, that are covered. Uh, but near the ocean, because all the salinity from the air will damage this equipment. You need to use our outdoor family for that. So the first model is the SAP 1610. This, this is a um, 4x4 antenna, uh, works at 3100 megabits per second. So this other AC number that you'll see, this AC 3100, that's the speed of the wireless connection. So our SAP 1510 works at 1900 megabits per second. So this is the difference from 
one of the uh, one of our access points to the knob to the other. You'll see that the speed that works in the wireless connection gets lower and lower. Um, and this is because our, our largest one works with a four by four antenna. This works on a three by three antenna, and this works on a two by two antenna. Um, so that limits a little the speed that, that uh, our access point works at. Um, one of the, the advantages of, of working with Luxo, and we're going to see a little bit at the end, uh, it's not even a product that will give you extra margin like other brands, but its performance will be better um, on, a, let's say, Apple to Apple comparison on, on some characteristics. So if you go to other brand manufacturers, like let's say Ubiquiti, and you see an access point that has the same price tag uh, as one of our, our Luxo access points, if you go to that speed comparison, you will always see that we're going to win and we have um, best fit performance in our access point than other manufacturers like Ubiquiti. Our outdoor family, we have one model that works only on a 2.4 gigahertz network. Um, saying that all of our rest of our access points work on either dual band, 2.4, and 5 gigahertz connection. We have that SAP 1440 that works at 1200 uh, megabits per second. That is uh, an access point that has the 2.4 and the 5.0 uh, for outdoor coverage. And the point to point bridge. So, this is an interesting uh, product for, for the Caribbean. So, let's say we have um, um, a holiday home or a vacation home at the beach. And you have the main house, then you have all the network connection, all the wireless connection uh, and coverage. But let's say you have a gazebo or a pergola or some barbecue place outside. Um, that you don't have any uh, wired uh, cable going, so you can have, a, let's say, a TV connection or if you want wireless coverage. So what the, the, this point-to-point -point bridge does is that, first of all, you need to be uh, in line of sight, so there doesn't have to be any physical interference uh, between the two of them. Um, so what we'll give you is in the far end, let's say in the pergola gazebo, this point-to-point -point bridge will give you a wired Ethernet connection coming out from the main house. Uh, the, the antenna that's being connected on the far end, this will not give you a Wi-Fi connection. So this only works for the point-to-point -point bridge to give you the, the wired Ethernet connection, but it will not give you a Wi-Fi coverage. So if you still need a Wi-Fi coverage for it, you will need to add either a, a 4040 or a 1240, so you can have wireless connection in that um, far end. One of our newer um, products in the access point family is the P40. The P40, it's a small, um, access point. Um, it connects directly to, to a wall outlet, so it doesn't have a, um, a power cord. Uh, this works in both 5 gigahertz and 2.4, but it has actually two um, working modes. One of them, it's a repeater. So a repeater will, as its name said, repeat the Wi-Fi signal. So let's say you have a place at the office or at home that you don't have the enough wireless strength um, and you can keep dropping out a Wi-Fi signal. So this will read up that weak Wi-Fi signal and repeat it so you can have better uh, signal strength in, an, in that area. So that's one way to work for it. And the other one is as a client. So it will actually connect to the Wi-Fi network, either at 2.4 or 5.0, and will give you a wired um, Ethernet cable. So that's great when you need, let's say, TVs that doesn't have any Wi-Fi 
availability would have a LAN physical connection. Um, thing like doorbells that um, needs uh, most of the times some Ethernet or PoE connection. This is a great piece uh, um, working for that. So just one um, characteristic or, or one definition so that you can be pretty uh, familiar of how to deploy either an indoor and outdoor access point. So there's a main difference, not only from a physical perspective and an IP rating of, of, of the, either the indoor or outdoor, but it's still the pattern where they um, have the wireless uh, coverage. The indoor access point, they, they commit the signal on an omnidirectional pattern. So it really deploys a sphere of communication. Meanwhile, the outdoor, it has a straight pattern. So you need to know this in order to, when you're designing a system, where are you going to locate the, the access points? Um, so all one of our cool features that, that our access points, um, all of our access points comes in the box, shipped from, from our warehouse, comes with an included PoE injector. So if you don't have a PoE switch, uh, all of our access points are being uh, shipped out with a PoE injector. So now that you have this information, I will always recommend uh, quoting or trying to use managed switches before using a PoE switch, because all of our access points, we're going to come with a PoE injector. So we mentioned at the beginning that we have uh, um, an equipment, uh, a product that's called the wireless controller. A lot of manufacturers have wireless controllers into their product line, but there's an actual difference from how we handle that wireless communication from all of the other manufacturers. And that's the way you handle the roaming issue. So roaming issues comes when you have more than one access point on a project. When, when you have one access point, there are no roaming issues because you can navigate through the entire project, either your home or, or office, but you don't have any problem because there's just only one access point. The roaming issue begins when you have more than one access point associated to the same network so every time a client that needs to connect, when, when I'm talking about client, I'm talking about the equipment, the, your iPad, iPhone, laptop, or TV that's trying to hook up to, to your wired network, not your, your client as an integrator. So every time you have a client trying to connect to the network, it will always see um, the, the, the more powerful strength or the more signal strength coming from one access point, and it will connect to these. So but when, it, when you start to move, the, the client will start to see that there's more access points on the network, and, and at some point, um, it will try to connect to a second access point. The problem is that that decision of disconnecting from the first access point and moving up to the second one, that's the roaming thing, the decision is being done by the client, let's say by the, by the IP, okay? So the problem we lie here because that decision being made by that iPad, the iPad and every wireless product and every wireless client doesn't want to be disconnected from the network. So you have a problem that's called a sticky problem. So I'm pretty sure that you, you have some service calls from the from Mr. Customer saying, you know what, I'm standing just beneath my access point and I only have one uh, bar signal strength on my iPad. And that's because that iPad, it's been sticky and trying to hook up to the first access point and not doing the roaming because 
it is a client decision and those clients are sticky or tend to be sticky. So how do we solve that roaming issue? So we solved it through a product that's called a wireless controller. Remember, we have two models, one that handles 16 access points, and the other one that handles 32 access points. So the wireless controller, not only they give us that, but it is really simple to set up and management all the access points through the home because you just configure the controller. So imagine uh, uh, a project that you have, let's say, 15 access points. If you don't have a wireless controller, you'll have to configure each one of those 15 access points with their channel, with the SSID, the password, and everything. If you have those 15 access points connected to the wireless controller, you just need to do one configuration, that's to the wireless controller, and the wireless controller handles the configuration of all the 15 access points by uh, itself. This is also happening with the firmware issue. So you, you don't need to go and deploy firmware updates to every single access point on the project. You just go to the control, say, update firmware to access points, and it will deploy the firmware to all of the access points that are being managed under the wireless control. So the way most of the manufacturers handle roaming it's just that, as I mentioned before, right? It, the, the wireless client is trying to connect up uh, to the network. It see two access points. One of them obviously has more strength, the one on the left. Um, so it will connect actually to the one on the left. So Mr. Customer now starts walking through the, the, the home or the office, and suddenly it starts to have this sticky connection because it doesn't want to disconnect from the first one until you have really an issue of really slow communication or pretty much no communication at all. So then we'll actually connect to the second one. So this is the, the, the problem. And the problem is, as I mentioned before, that the roaming decision is left entirely to this network client device. The way we handle uh, our roaming communication. Um, first of all, I'm going to mention that only two manufacturers in our industry, in our custom installation channel, uh, handles um, roaming with this active technology. One of them, obviously, is Luxel, and the second one is Ruckus. I don't know if you guys know uh, Ruckus as brand, but that's like the Ferrari or Maserati of wireless access points. Pretty much sure that one of their access points will gonna cost at least five or more times than the, the Luxor one. And you still will have the same uh, active roaming configuration and technology that they have in our product lineup. So the way we handle this communication is the following. It starts the same, so you have Mr. Klein trying to connect to the network. So you will see, in this case, two access points. They will, the same until here, say to the, to the client, this is your signal strength. But what makes this, what makes us different and, and the way that's, and, and the reason that's called an active uh, assistance is that the access point will inform or communicate the controller the signal strength that they both are looking to the, the, this one uh, network client. So the controller, it's the one making the decision which access point is gonna give the client the ability to connect to the network. So in this case, it will close the communication to the second one and will connect to the first one. So then Mr. Klein starts spreading and, and, and walking uh, through the project. And every like three seconds, all of the access points will communicate back to the controller and inform and let the controller know what signal strength are they looking into every single wireless client they have. 
So the controller is the one actively making the decision of which uh, access point you should let go this network client and which access point should welcome this network client. So as Mr. Kessler starts to move, you'll see that these access points are reporting communication and given the, the, um, the equipment, the signal to do the roaming. And this is being done by um, ending up communication to the first uh, access point, and then the, the network client starts doing the roaming process and looking over again at the signal strength and then communicate uh, again. So this is one of the recent advantages that our wireless controller gives. And remember, uh, in the wired routers, wireless routers, that um, wireless controller is built in, but it can handle only two access points under its management. If you need more than two, uh, you will need to add a wireless controller, either the XWC1000 or 2000 into the network. So some of the advantages are, and one loss. So we have already talked about some um, technical differences or some um, differential characteristics that we have to other um, network manufacturers. But let's talk about money-wise. So first, as Nick mentioned before, um, we have a specific channel that we sell this product to. So for all the Caribbean, the only way that you can um, uh, find uh, lots of products are through audio video export. And the reason that we uh, and lots of uh, work this way is because this uh, networking uh, family is exclusively sold through the CDA channel. So you're not gonna see any pricing available online. So it practically can't be shopped anywhere else than audio video export. And this will give you uh, the ability to make money on this product. You have a really good margin uh, on this product. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, all of our, our products are commercial class solutions. Uh, so they're pretty much affordable. And when you compare this, um, us, our solutions to other manufacturers, you'll see that at the same price levels, you'll have uh, better benefits or, or more speed or um, POE injectors uh, being deployed in the access points uh, or other features that, that will make us uh, really different from other. Um, it is a single source for networking, so we handle from the routers to the PEUs, so you don't need to go to another manufacturer to purchase any other networking gear. And we have great support, not only from Luxel directly, but you have two more companies that you can go to any uh, request that you have from design to technical support, that's audio video export or uh, Polaris control. So you feel free to, to contact to, uh, to any of us three. Um, all of our products have a three-year warranty on the products uh, sold after January 1st. So pretty much all of our products being sold now are handling three year warranty in that. So why is the Luxo? First, it's a network equipment being specifically engineered for integrated for our channel with uh, great margin products, uh, great compatibility to other manufacturers like Just That Power, and we're about to, to start talking about that. Commercial grade solutions, easy to install, deploy. Um, you can, um, if you're not familiar with Luxel, we have for our wireless uh, routers, we have either an app that you can use with either on an iPad or an iPhone or Android that you can actually configure uh, a Luxel wireless router. Um, our active roaming technology, uh, and as I mentioned before, all of the warranty tech support that you have uh, from the three companies backing up this brand, that's Luxel and Legrand, Audio Video Export, and us in Polaris Controls. So thank you very much. And this is the end of the Luxel uh, part. Um, 
I don't know if you have any questions or Nick. Yeah, there are a couple. Uh, there are a couple of questions as you're switching presentations. There, um, Eric. Good question with regard to 220 volt PDU equipment. Um, the there are some PDUs that are available. These PDUs that are done uh, under the Luxel brand, they're actually Middle Atlantic products. There are 220 volt versions of them, but that does not necessarily mean that they are available um, with the connection to the network for uh, remote connection via um, domots. Um, let me, let's take a note and figure out what other kind of solution there would be. But for the moment, those Luxel PDUs are gonna be 110 volt, 120 volt only. Uh, I don't know if they're 50 slash 60. So for those customers that are in uh, Jamaica or Barbados, um, I'm not sure if that's going to be a problem or not, but we can verify that as well. Uh, and Chris, with regard to the P40, it's essentially going to work in two different modes. One of two different modes. You're either going to use it. it remember, number one, it's not going to work with the controller, right? So it's not under any circumstance going to be uh, having the, the roaming functionality as part of that. However, um, and for those of you who don't remember the P40, that's the, that's the plug-in module. What it does do though, is it'll work as a repeater. So it'll take the signal in, you know, if it's got a little bit of a weak signal of Wi-Fi, and then you just need to be able to repeat it. Um, but really where it's gonna be successful is taking that Wi-Fi signal and then converting that out to a LAN cable. That's gonna be where I think that would be, you, you would have the most success. So you've got a device that needs a, a LAN cable, um, for instance, a, a universal remote control base station, an MX, an MRX-10, right? You got to have it. It's got to be on uh, wired LAN. And so, you know, you just don't have a good Wi-Fi signal in that area, or you do have good Wi-Fi signal area, but you don't have a way to be able to stretch uh, that into a LAN port. So you can use the P40 to be able to receive that Wi-Fi signal, com communicate over Wi-Fi, and then convert it over to a LAN cable. Uh, that's it that's pending for the moment. Anybody else who's got questions, um, please feel free and go ahead and uh, and continue on. JP, thanks. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about just the power um, and what makes it unique. First, um, just the power. What's just the power? It's a video over IP. Uh, company that has been um, working with this technology for the past 25 years. So we pretty much started the uh, video over IP um, uh, technology because remember, let's say 10 years ago, we only had this matrix based HD based T either analog or, or HDMI video distribution system. But we have been using and distributing from uh, X video signals or VGA signals for the past 25 years. So we know what we're doing on the, um, on the video distribution uh, technologies. So what is HDIP, that's HDMI over IP? It's pretty much data video data that's being transmitted over the network um, using recognized standards as TCP IP communication protocol. So we then uh, woke up one morning and said, well, we're just gonna create a new standard and, and, and try to send signals over a CAT5 or CAT6 cable. So this is standard TCP IP communication. So this will work on any uh, Ethernet LAN connection that you have. So you can imagine uh, the great retrofit applications that you can do, and it's not requiring using CAT6 cable. Uh, you, we can use it in CAT5 communication because we don't need a 10 gigabit network. We work in a one gigabit network. Obviously we do some, um, um, kind of, of, of things to, to send a 4K signal uh, in, in that one gigabit bandwidth, some kind of compression. Um, so there are a couple of ways and methods that you can send and distribute video signals. So, so the first one, and pretty much what we're used to, it's the point-to-point -point, uh, configuration. Uh, this point-to-point -point we're used to having like video balloons, 
or HDBSD transmitters and receivers, that's called HDMI extenders. Uh, but all of these technologies, the video balloons, the HDMI extenders, have clock syncing issues. You're gonna end up without having any video signal or a pink uh, image or a green image or no image at all at some point. Um, all of our just powered uh, products work in a point-to-point -point solution, but they will work as a standard Ethernet TCP IP point-to-point -point communication. So there's no need to switch, to have a switch here, but you will benefit from an Ethernet communication and not having any syncing issues, clocking issues uh, on the Vimeo distribution from an HTBST uh, transmitter and receiver. The second uh, method is uh, working as a signal splitter. The signal splitter is uh, when, where you need uh, one video signal feed to more than one uh, video display. So in this case, you will definitely need a um, uh, switch that we're gonna talk at the end that we recommend switches that have the ability to create VLANs. So you have better communication and better video signal at the, at the displays. So this is method number two. And obviously on method number three, we have a limitless HDMI distribution. What does this mean? This means that you can have the amount of transmitters and the amount of receivers as big as your network is. So we can deploy a smaller applications like a two by two, or we can go up to, let's say, a 24 by 64, like in an airport or shopping mall solution. So, and we can even add a third party system control uh, via RS-232 or IP so that we can control uh, and, and bring some automation into this video distribution scheme. So two um, um, benefits of working um, not, not only with us and just the power, but with any video over IP distribution scheme, it's first of all, you don't have any um, limit under the distance that you can send signal to. Uh, typically on an HE-based distribution, uh, depends on the brand and the resolution, uh, you have a distance maximum to either, let's say 40 meters or 100 meters tops. Uh, in uh, an ethernet connection, obviously if you're going copper, you have a, a maximum distance of 100 meters, but you can always go and use uh, fiber transducers to go, let's say, from a building to a building, uh, so you can send video signals to that uh, fiber connection. So there's pretty much no distance limitation in a video over IP distribution scheme. Just a quick note about fiber optic cable. Um, we've, we've done a good amount of fiber with Clearline Fiber and uh, our dealers absolutely love it. In fact, it's easier to terminate. It's safer. You can have stronger pull um, and you've got all sorts of different versions, whether you need it at six. Um, they're not called conductors because they're not conducting electricity. They're called strands. So you can do it uh, um, single, dual. You can do six strand. You can do 12 strand. You can do 24 strand. Uh, burial, uh, direct burial, all that kind of stuff. And uh, again, it's it's safer and we carry it. It's really easy to work with. Don't be afraid just because it's fiber. Yeah, if, if at some point you're not doing fiber right now, you're gonna need to do fiber in at less than a year. I can be sure that you're gonna need fiber in some applications. So you better start up um, having some, some training on, on fiber. And, and I know that audio videos can help you with that. Um, the other cool feature about uh, video over IP distribution is that uh, HDMI matrices typically comes into a specific sizes. So let's say a four by four, eight by eight, or 16 by 16. But with a video over IP distribution scheme, you can do a two by 24, or a, uh, let's say 12 uh, by 15, you can do whatever you want because you built it 
uh, on on depending on your on your project demands. So that's that's all we good um, going into a video right field distribution. So some cool features that we have. First of all, we have instant switching. So uh, even if you have on your TV when you go from one uh, HDMI input to, to a second HDMI input, you'll see that you have in between uh, a specific period of time that you will end up with a with a, with a blank screen or, or a dark uh, image, right? So with a video over IP distribution, since we're just sending data, the switching it's it's being done instantly. So that's from an um, end of user perspective, that's great on commercial applications as well as residential applications. So then we have the distance um, capability. We don't have any limitation, so we can do long distances. Then we can do some image pull or image push in the image. So let's pretend we're doing a, a bar or restaurant that has a lot of, of, of TVs, a sports bar. Um, we can push up our restaurant logo on top of the video image, so you can always have this marketing material being shown on your TVs, for example. Um, we can do some on-screen display as well. For example, uh, let's say uh, there's happy hour between 7 to 9, um, and those kind of, of um, displays as well. Uh, we have the ability to transmit um, in the network uh, USB and CEC controls. So USB specifically being done or for um, touch. JP, do, you, do you happen to know off the top of your head? Does these devices do they do audio return channel? Um, I think some models will work with audio return channel. That's my understanding as well. Certain models will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the CEC over IP, and you'll see in our plug and play family, it will give you some kind of of display control without having any third-party control systems like URC, Crestron, or whatever you're using. So that's that's always useful in some kind of applications. One of the coolest features that we have in our, our entire product lineup is the, the, the built-in um, capability to handle video walls with no additional charge. So you don't need to rely on a video wall controller or processor to 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 build up the video wall. This is this is a built-in feature that you don't need to pay any extra money. You just need to buy the video wall uh, display like the ones that Audio Video Expert have from NEC, and you're ready and good to go. So this is a great um, solution for the commercial jobs out there as well as mosaic video walls. These are green and very artistic that are being uh, used in restaurants, lobbies, uh, and a lot of applications that we can see more and more. Uh, this is a very, very cool feature. I really like that, uh, that characteristic. So remember, this is something that we have built in at no charge in our entire product line. Um, some uh, extra characteristic that we have, so let's talk about audio and video specifically. From an audio perspective, we handle either analog two-channel stereo or uncompressed multi-channel, let's say Dolby Atmos or DTSS X or Dolby Digital um, pass-through audio signals. Uh, in some models, we even have a built-in mixer that can handle a line input or a mic input into and can be mixed into the HDMI signal. In some uh, products on the receiver end, we'll have an analog stereo output connection if it's needed. Um, on the video side, one of the cool features of having a video over IP solution that you will not see on a matrix, um, video matrix uh, characteristic is handling uh, different resolutions into different um, uh, displays on the on the project. So we will you can do a mix and match from full HD 1080p and 4K displays and sources 
and the result will be amazing. And you will still have, if you look, if you use VLAN switches, you will have the instant switching capability that we offer. So let's start talking about the products. So the, our first family that I'm going to introduce, it's our plug and play solution. So this plug and play solutions comes in two families. The first one, the one you see on your left, that's being point right now, it's a wall plate solution. So this is great for commercial jobs, um, boardrooms, meeting rooms, salons, that you need to do some kind of uh, presentation or big distribution. Uh, this is great for schools, universities. Uh, and we also have our box um, solution as well. So this, we have models that handles our two generations or three generations. Our 2G models only handles 1080p signals. Our 3G models handle a video resolution up to 4K uh, from a video perspective. Um, so what's great in a plug and play uh, and present solution is that it, this will give you some kind of automation or display control without having a third party control system. So let me show you how it works. So let's imagine a boardroom meeting room that we have this um, wall plate solution uh, and a box solution receiver uh, behind that TV. So we're going to start uh, a conference, uh, a meeting, and uh, I come in and connect my computer, and as soon as the world play um, receives and sends this video signal, can give the a command, a CEC command uh, via the network, via IP, or via IR, or RS-232 to the TV so it can power on. This will not give you like video switching, and it depends on the CEC commands that your display supports. But if you have only one um, connection and one HDMI input, this will work great of just powering on and off without having any third party uh, control solution. So when you finish up the meeting and you unplug your, your video cable, HDMI cable uh, from the wall plate, it will sense that there's no video signal present and will automatically power off the TV. So this plug and play and present solution is really great for a lot, a lot of applications. And even you can have it from a point to point perspective and no switch connection whatsoever. So this is really great. And, and you should uh, look into a little deep if you work in the commercial environment. Um, as I mentioned before, we have the 2G family that works in 1080p. But we're going to focus more on, on our 3G series and family because we, we want to be uh, bulletproof into the future and work with uh, 4K uh, environment. So our baseline unit is the 707 PoE. Um, so this handles 4K HTCP 2.2, all audio support, so you can have uh, multi-channel audio being uh, set up through our, our network. You, we have RS-232 and CEC control, and we can do some image pull uh, into this transmitter. Uh, if you need this set of features, you can just look at this table and see what you need. So for example, let's say you need um, USB over IP control. So that's fine on our 718 AVP piece. So please feel free to download the handout um, PDF files that you have uh, on the GoToMeeting panel. Uh, so you can have all this uh, information for yourselves. Um, there's also, a, I think the best slide is this just a power presentation or keynote, uh, it's this one. Because it will give you a logical path uh, to see and end up on the product that you need, depending on some question being asked. So we're going to start with a 708 PoE that has this set of characteristics. But if you don't need a stereo output connection, you can go either to 
one of these you can go and navigate through all of the questions but if you need down mixing to stereo we have a box and a wall plate um, product that can help you with that so this is a great uh, you can look at it as well as in handout application um, so other transmitters that we have are uh, different um, video formats. So we have a VGA, SDI, and TVI, depends on the video signal that you have. I know that VGA is not being used that much, but we still have a lot in commercial applications. And then we have the wall plates and rack mount solutions uh, for our transmitters as well. The rack mounts are great if you have all your video sources located in the same place because the ragman pieces can handle either four or three uh, video inputs at the same time. Um, we also have a Dante transmitter. Um, if you're not familiar with Dante, Dante it's an audio over IP um, solution that's pretty much being used on commercial applications. So we have a Dante transmitter built in um, audio as well. We also have a warp engine that can help you create cool images like the ones you're looking at on the screen right now in this, in this uh, picture. And at the end, we have our tiling solution. Our tiling solution will give you the ability to, um, on the same display, have multiple images going into this tiling solution. So if you're a great sports fan or news fan or whatever, you, you can see the um the benefits of, of having the tiling into your theater or family room or, or main master bedroom so and from a receiver um endpoint uh we have a baseline unit that's a 508 poe uh look at the features and you'll see that even our baseline unit has this uh video wall um, capability and the built-in scaler so that we can handle both 1080p and 4k uh, resolutions on the same video distribution scheme. Um, the same as the logical uh, questions, obviously there's a little bit less product in our receiver family. Um, one of the coolest receivers that we have is the Daisy chain receiver. Um, so the daisy chain receiver will help you in these two sets of, of applications. The first one is creating a two by two video wall. I think this is the cheapest way that you'll find on the market to build up a two by two video wall. So you're only going to need the four displays and the four 509 PoE uh, just at power receivers. But what's cool about this is that you will only need one port on your switch. Just please remember that since it's only coming from one PoE port, we cannot power the entire four uh, receivers from that single uh, port. So you're gonna uh, go and see through a data sheet uh, that you will need a, a power connection into each one of them. The other way that you can go, it's in a 1080p resolution, you can go from a single port on the switch and you can go up to four different video um, sources into four different displays being daisy chain as well. So this is really great for, for commercial jobs that you're doing like digital signage, large commercial jobs. Uh, because you don't need to go uh, in, from every single display to a, to a port on the switch. So just to wrap up and finish up our, our video over IP uh, presentation, we're just going to discuss about which switch should we use on this video over IP solution. So we have, and we can work as just a power with the two uh, sets of configuration that we that you're gonna see on the video over IP scheme. The first one is a VLAN switching network, and the second one is the typical multicast switching uh, scheme. So what we're always gonna recommend it's a VLAN switching, and we're gonna see right now why. 
So some of the pros that we have on a VLAN switching is, first of all, from Just the Power, you'll see that we have a software tool for, for configuring those VLANs. So you don't need to be a Cisco genius or, or a Luxo genius into configuring every VLAN that you need on your real distribution. Uh, we're going to have the instant switching capability. And since we're working on VLANs, the switching resources needed from the network switch, it's not going to be that much. And if you have third party control systems, the drivers for, for controlling that network switch, because remember in an HDMI over IP distribution, what's really doing the, that matrix and switching capability, it's the network switch. So if you're having a third party control system, what this third party control system needs to control, it's gonna be the network switch. So we're gonna need to create a driver for controlling that network switch. But we have tools to create those those drivers automatically. So th that's a great um, pro that we can have on the VLAN configuration. So on cons is that we cannot do this software tool for any uh, switch manufacturer that you can find on the on the market. So that software tool works only for two manufacturers and some specific switches under these manufacturers. One of them, it's Luxo, and the second one, it's Cisco. And the other con is that it's port-based. So if you configure ports, let's say two through six at cramped meters and seven through 12 as, as receivers, and if you're adding up uh, one extra transmitter, you're gonna need to reconfigure all of your switch because it's port based. Um, so that's one of the cons. It's not such a big deal, uh, but it's it's something that we can see it as a con. Um, the multicast switching system, it's great because you can do it without any switch and it's not port based. But first, you'll have to manual configure the switch because you don't have any uh, software configuration tool, you're gonna see some kind of delay on the images. You're not gonna have the instant switching and it will consume a lot of switch resources in that network switch. So saying that, we're always gonna recommend working high by hand, Luxel and just a pack. And in the Just a Power website, you're going to see this table that, if, uh, depending on the, the, the amount of ports or devices that you need to connect, which switch uh, Just a Power will recommend for that video distribution product. After that, um, and wrapping up uh, this webinar, uh, Just a Power offers a five year full warranty for all of our products. So you have a three-year warranty in Luxel and a five-year warranty on our Just a Power products. So that's pretty much covering all this, the, the commercial um, standard of three-year warranty in any commercial job that you have. Um, so thank you very much for all of you um, giving us your time to attend this webinar. Uh, thanks Nick and all the guys on Audio Video Export for for this webinar as well. Uh, please feel free to uh, join our social media accounts. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube under Polaris Controls all together. And we recently um, started our, our podcast and you can find us on Spotify as Polaris Controls Interactive. Uh, so please feel free to, to go and, and, and look for us at the podcast as well. So thank you very much, Nick. I think we're going to stay a little, a uh, couple of minutes here. If any guys have any questions, feel free yeah. to communicate. Thanks so much, JP, and for the team over at, at uh, Polaris Controls, obviously. Um, I think I've covered all of the questions, unless somebody has anything else that's lingering that they want to uh, ask. If not, we can uh, go ahead and, and close out, but it's uh, a lot of really great information. In fact, we're talking about doing with Polaris and ClearLine Technology another webinar with regard to 
uh, a Luxel and Clearline. Uh, that should be a relatively short presentation. But in addition to that, we're talking about doing possibly a Luxel workshop, right? Where we do, um, you know, a, a, a much more in-depth uh, overview of what Luxel really is and how it works. But then we go over much more in depth, some options, you know, and some real world examples, uh, you know, and how to work things, you know, we'll do like a restaurant or a bar or something like that. And we'll figure out some different things in order to do. So stay tuned if you're not, uh, if you're unfamiliar, make sure that you're on our mailing list. Much appreciated again. And uh, thanks so much. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.